Hey, welcome to Talking Church. Glad you could join us today. And uh, we've got our live audience here. Also, you guys watching at home and uh, those watching on Catch Up. So, big welcome to you all. Uh, we had a big weekend, another big weekend in Family Church this week. And uh, I love it that it seems that every uh, weekend in Family Church is uh, becoming a good, big, effective um, uh, weekend. And I've got Stuart with me today because Stuart was heading up um, a lot of the initiative of this last weekend in Family Church, which was all around connect groups. So I thought it would be neat to take this moment on Talking Church to talk a little bit about the purpose, the why behind the what of connect groups, because all across the congregations, and I know we've got people watching uh, from Synergy Churches and other churches, but I know whether you call them life, life groups or hubs or pods, whatever you call them, the concept's the same. It's having an expression of church that's a smaller expression than the bigger expression of the event or the meeting together and understanding the purpose. Because sometimes trying <coughs> to get people connected to something outside of the Sunday meeting can be horrendous, can't it? It's just like people almost are wired, especially those who have been raised in or exposed to any religion within England, that church is a compartmentalised or sectionalised part of their life that really involves a couple of hours on Sunday. Anything outside of that isn't really reasonable. Now, I'm not saying that's our my wiring or the wiring of family church folk, but that can be the wiring that people come into church having. But actually, that wiring doesn't affect the church, it affects the person. Because I believe the church has so much more to offer a person, a family, than a Sunday meeting. Now, right off of the bat, I am not knocking Sunday meetings. I love Sunday meetings. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling together. I love the event side of what we do at church. But sometimes I think we're expecting too much from it because we're trying to make it everything instead of letting it be what it is. But to me, when we look at church on Sunday, it's a gathering. Um, it's a time of celebration. Uh, we shared this over the last few weeks about getting balance in church, not making church what it's not meant to be, or trying to make Sunday everything in the life of a believer. Um, it should be a time of training, a time of mobilization, a time of rejoicing, where we hear about what God's been doing during the week and what he's got planned in the week ahead. So when we look at church on Sunday, the gathering, it's a part of what we are. But we need to also understand, because on Sunday, across our congregations, it was all about relaunching our connect groups. <clears throat> or put another way, introducing them to people in a new or a fresh way. Not as something that's obligation, but something that's great benefit. Now, that flows from a persuasion in the leadership that connect groups are good for people. Now... It's not a persuasion in the church leadership that says, well, every other church is doing it, we should do it. No, no, it's much more than that. We believe, if you were to talk to any of the pastors today, they would say that we <coughs> believe that connect groups or small groups are vitally important for the growth of the believer and the community of what we are as a church. Again, we keep going back to this definition. To us in family church, we don't believe that church is a building. Uh, churches have buildings, but church is not a building. Church is not a service on a Sunday in a part of a city, town, or village that you meet. Church is a community of people that have this in common. They know that they've been called out of darkness into light, that they're now kingdom people, citizens of the kingdom of God here on earth. Who do we have in common? Jesus. He's our common king, and his kingdom is our kingdom. So when we define what church is, we can begin to understand the importance of small groups. Again, the last two weeks we've been speaking about balance and the whole thought of how balance needs to take place in the life of a believer, um, in church, in, in ministry, in marriage. We've been looking at these things. Last week we looked at the balance of understanding the importance of the Old Testament and the New Testament. All these things are rewatchable later. But there's a real balance when we look at the need or the purpose of small groups because church I believe the perfect recipe for church is big church experience and small church experience you know sometimes we've had people come over the last 21 years and they've said you know what we've come along the family church 
not really our cup of tea, not really uh, what we want. Um, and they're almost saying we didn't get from it what we needed. And a common question I've asked over many years is, have you experienced the church um, in correct context or in its fullness? And they'll say, what do you mean? I say, I see you there on Sunday. And um, I see you on Sunday coming along, sometimes on time. Just thought I'd slide that one in. Um, you know, engaging in kids' church. But do you do anything else in the week, um, a small group type setting, whether that's a homeless ministry, meeting in someone's homes? And often they'll say, well, no. And I, I say, well, you know what, before you leave, why don't you try what we think is a per perfect recipe of church, which is... Continue to experience big church on Sunday, which we'll call event church. But also have a go at small church in one of the many, many varieties of uh, opportunities there are for small church. And what I found a lot of the time is sometimes people won't do that because that violates to them what church deserves or what church is in their understanding of it. Other times people do and they say, wow, all of a sudden we discovered something about church that isn't so much event, it's more community. And to me, more and more we're coming back to this understanding that the church really is a community of faith. It's people that find Jesus, are finding Jesus, are discovering what Christianity is, how it affects every aspect of their life, and there's a journeying together. So our recipe as leaders for getting the best out of family church, or whatever church you may attend, is be a part of big church experience, but also have small church interaction or community. Because each offers something very, very different. Um, the early church was more of a community than what it was a performance or an event. Again, I'm not a candidate or I don't subscribe to either or thinking. I choose balance rather than that. Because often with the things of God, it's not about have this or have that. It's about enjoy the benefits of everything. That's not compromise in a negative form. It's wisdom. Now, when it comes to church, we look at the early church as our model, right? You know, when we often, again, can talk to people, they'll say, oh, the church just needs to go back to how it started. And often what they mean is back to Victorian times or Edwardian times. And some of the religious procedures within those times, medieval times, that really didn't have much to do with Jesus or the faith community. But, hey, I can subscribe to this. If we're going to go back to the origins to see our purpose, discover our identity, let's go back to the very beginning, which is the book of Acts, when the, there's a church that's born in fire, that Jesus Christ rises from the dead. Um, he says, I will build my church, ecclesia, a called out people. And then we begin to see this group of people the, the first church in the book of Acts. And again, please, let's take away Jewish style and those things because the church was planted in a nation of Israel, in a city of Jerusalem. Um, but it was a church that would be planted in Europe, Asia, Africa, throughout the world, an unstoppable, um, triumphant church that expressed itself through the local cultures it was in. But the cultures or the styles of those cultures were never meant to be our DNA of what church was. Rather, the DNA was to be the purpose, what Jesus had asked us to do, the expression of obedience, wherever the Lord's planted us. But when we look at the early church, it kind of shakes some of our event thinking, our 21st century <coughs> event church performance uh, church thinking. That when we look, we see Acts 2 again. We've journeyed through this over the last few months since September where we all entered into what we called the recipe, Acts 2, uh, I think it's verse 42, where it says, they give us this glimpse of the early church, and they devoted themselves. There was self-devotion in the early church. It wasn't uh, leadership management. It wasn't leaders saying, you must do this. But there, there was a devotion in the heart of the people, all those who had encountered what Christ had achieved at the cross, that they were going to be responsible for their own lives, getting themselves where they needed to be in God, but also locationally. But they devoted themselves to apostolic uh, truth, to the teaching of God's word, to fellowship, to breaking the bread, and to prayer. Yeah. And again, how do we outwork that in our modern Western way of thinking? We can't help <coughs> ourselves often. We turn that into a meeting. 
So out of our conclusions, we come up with a ceremony where people queue up at the front of an altar on Sunday morning to receive a wafer uh, from a priest. He puts it on their tongue or puts it into their hands. Um, they receive communion. And that to us is communion because of a religious um, understanding. But that's really not how they did communion in the book of Acts. It's really not. That's how the Constantine church or the religious church took the life out of something powerful and made it organized. Not that God can't heal through that type of communion. I believe God can heal through anything. When all the ingredients are in the bowl, God can do anything, right? So, you know, communion in church on Sunday, we're going to carry on to do communion. We do it once a month. But are we missing something? Are we missing what community could add to that? Just bear with me in my little journeys um, of imaginations. What if communion was something that naturally happened in a small group setting, not just a Sunday service? What if there were a group of believers that were gathering around a home or a coffee bar naturally without the framework of two fast songs, two slow songs, a preaching, a quick prayer, we, outside of the context or the framework of what we often know meetings to be. What if there were a group of people that were simply living in the two commandments of love God, love each other, and out of that expression of community, they were meeting together Monday, Wednesday, afternoon, evening. None of those things really matter. But as they're just spending time with each other, maybe eating together, because a lot of, West, uh, or a lot of um, the culture of the Middle East involved eating, which I'm a subscriber for more for that. Um, what if naturally out of that came an expression of communion? For example, I had some friends around last night. I had uh, Smudge and Janine around last night, and they came around, and uh, they heard Gina was cooking, so they pitched up, and we all sat around a big <laughs> table. We ate uh, lasagna, or I call it lasagna, and get mocked for my pronunciation of it. Um, but we were sitting around, and naturally we were began to talk about the things of God. It wasn't like, oh, okay, we've been here, we've eaten dinner, uh, we better talk about the things of God now. It, was, it, it wasn't a life group. It was people doing life together. But it wasn't long before we started talking about who God was, what he's done in our lives, what we're believing him for. What in that setting if I suddenly grabbed, uh, grabbed a loaf of bread and some juice and said, hey, should we just remember what Jesus did for us? Should we just give thanks together? You know, the Bible said that we shouldn't forsake the taking of communion. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, you know. And what if around the table, just after we'd finished our Italian food, we grabbed bread and just said, come on, let's give thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for the body broken. Thank you. And, and communion was done in that setting. How wonderful would that be? But again, not either or, but we still did it on Sunday as a corporate expression of our commitment to what the Lord asked us to do. But we journeyed away from timescales and certain things. What if loving each other wasn't about what we did on Sunday morning, our care ministries, but just doing life with each other? Because when you read the book of Acts, it says that people began <coughs> to sell stuff and say, listen, you've got need, I've got more than enough, let's, let's level this off a little bit. Um, and, and that was happening naturally. It wasn't from instruction on a pulpit. Um, so when I look at stuff like fellowship, fellowship means shared life or the sharing of life. It says the early church had fellowship, the sharing of life. Um, they had a commitment to teaching the truth, listening to the truth, and to prayer. And again, I believe they probably did have corporate prayer meetings. But I also think, again, in the home, the small community of people that were a part of the bigger community that maybe did have public meetings. Bear in mind, in their day, if you had public meetings, that told the Romans where you were, and that could actually bring persecution to you. So a lot of what they were doing was because of persecution in a more secret setting. We've got to understand the context. But public meetings to them could have brought a lot of terrorism to what they were doing because they were a cult in the minds of the Pharisee, the Sadducee, and a threat to the Romans. They were the followers of the way or, or, or the followers of this guy, Jesus, you know? So a lot of what they did in church happened underground. <coughs> um, but it was also very natural. What if we never had to remove... Because I'm listening to a lot of modern preachers today, and sadly some of them are talking messages that are dissembling the church. That's not what God's asking us to do. 
Church should have that beautiful common voice so that when we speak, government can hear, that the city can see an expression of what a group of people... So often the community think church is a group of eight old ladies sitting in a room and the building could be used for better things. But if they pop their head into the, the girls' school or the academy, into our old sports hall on a Sunday morning, they'd see hundreds of people worshipping this, this, this God, this, 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 this Lord called Jesus, and it's mind-blowing. Um, but what I'm saying is we're not dissembling church, because some might be watching, hey, this is what I've been believing for. That's often people that want to lead church, but the only platform they have is Facebook, and they do a terrible job on that in leading. But normal people, not weirdos, understand that church is glorious and it's brilliant, but sometimes don't live in the fullness or the good of what church could offer. So that brings us into thinking of the small groups. Now, we believe that small groups are not a sentence or a punishment, but they're very beneficial to the life of a believer in their personal growth. Um, Stuart, you really head the, headed up the kind of the charge of this, didn't you? I know as we were coming out of last year, we were looking at Acts 2, and what really caught my heart as kind of the lead pastor <coughs> of Family Church was the aspect of prayer. Yep. That really got all over me. And I really felt challenged, how can we get the church to value corporate prayer? That's a journey that continues. But you almost got caught by the other facet, didn't you? The fellowship. Mm -hmm. And I remember we sat in an office together and you said to me, uh, you were reading a book on courageous leadership and something really jumped on you about 100% of the church engaged in small group church activity or church life. That's and right. I'd never seen you, um, I've always seen you passionate, you're, you're a worshipper, I'd never seen you as driven by something uh, that was very much your vision uh, for not just Portsmouth, but the well-being of the church. Do you want to talk to us why that hit your heart so strongly? Yeah, sure. So for, for me... Um, one of the things I enjoy most in terms of my, my Christian walk is having people um, that I know well, who are friends of mine, who um, I can speak to about the things of God, who will challenge me, who will pray with me, um, who I have fellowship with. Um, the, the elders of Family Church, we have a, we've had a connect group for a long time. Um, where we meet together, and um, there's some of my favourite times where we, where we just talk Again, honestly. Again, just cutting in on that, the elders we meet, we're actually meeting tonight to talk about the business of the church, mm -hmm. but that's not what we did with our life group, was it? That's right. That was about, uh, explain what our elders' life group would look like. Yeah, so the elders' connect group connect is, um, <laughs> is uh, about um, the, the, uh, the six couples who are the elders of, of family church just coming together. Um, and, uh, and and chatting and talking and praying together and, and not having an agenda, but uh, making time to be accountable to one another, um, to be honest with one another, to talk about struggles, to talk about joys and talk about our expectations, um, talk about our families. Um, and, and that is really, really helpful to have that. And and I kind of want everyone to have that because it, it means so much. It, it, it is so helpful to have that environment. Um, so Acts 2, verse 42, um, and the next couple of verses, it, it talks about the, the people, the, the, the early church devoting themselves to these things, to the apostles' doctrine, uh, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. And, and like you said, the thing that really caught your heart was prayer. Um, and the thing that caught my heart was, was the fellowship side of it. And, um, and so I said to Andy, I, I really want to, and I was reading this book, um, where this mega church in the States had, had basically um, caught, they, they decided to make some big, hairy, audacious goals. And, uh, and one of them was to see 100% of their many, many thousands of people in small groups that, that provided discipleship to their people. And I thought, well, if they can do it, then so can we. Because <laughs> um, we're, we're not yet many thousands of people. Um, but what we are is, is we are large crowds um, that get together in our different locations um, and, and we need that same level of fellowship. And the result of, of Acts 2.42 was that the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Um, so, so all of those things, 
that that teaching uh, that is the apostles' doctrine, that that fundamental Christian teaching, that fellowship, that breaking of bread, that that prayer. Um, when they come together and they work together well, that will result in increase. Also, signs and wonders. Because the yep. very next thing, you know, everybody wants signs and wonders. But it was the recipe. It says, and they kept true to that recipe, faithful to it, committed to it. And it says, the Lord added to their number, but also great signs and wonders were done. Yeah. Interesting that we think that the journey to signs and wonders is something different. What if that, this is a journey? What if life groups and the, and the relationships that were formed? Just a thought. Yeah. And, and, and so the heart behind... Um, us relaunching connect groups in family church was that number one we want everyone to experience that that level of fellowship where people are getting together in homes um, and, and building strong relationships with one another because out of those strong relationships comes accountability um, it comes great discipleship because actually when you're with people that you're comfortable with and that you can trust um, you can ask those questions that you maybe wouldn't have an opportunity to ask otherwise. You can dig into those scriptures that you maybe wouldn't um, be able to dig into. And uh, and you can have people that are there um, who, to encourage you and support you. And when you're going through stuff, you have a, a family of people um, that you know really well, that you trust, um, that are with you. And, and that's the vision for now, the small groups. I want you to open up in a moment for us the aspects or the benefits being discipleship fellowship and, and yep. pastoral yep. but even in discipleship it's amazing on Sunday you know we got a few hundred people meeting there um, you're teaching the word from from a stage and you're teaching it to people that could be in the category of don't even believe in Jesus yet to those that have been walking with the Lord many years you've got 30 40 minutes you're throwing out verses concepts and a lot of them could be really shocking or ununderstandable to people on any element of their journey. But church on Sunday really isn't the setting for a few people to go, excuse me, I've got a question. That would be, um, again, if it was done with a right heart, it wouldn't be wrong. It would just be very disruptive. And it would not cause you to get out of the event what you need to. Mm -hmm. But yet people must have questions. It's like when we're teaching on tithing. Again, you start talking about God and people's money, you're going to get questions. Maybe not about any other area of their life, but uh, where do they ask those questions? Where do they get the answers to those questions? Where they're not judged or everyone in the crowd's looking at them, but there's a loving relationship that can help them unpack from people that maybe in their own lives have answered those. Mm -hmm. What's the place of discipleship, um, Stuart, in those groups and the need for it? Well, so Jesus, obviously, he was perfect. And he was perfect at drawing a crowd. Um, thousands of people at any one time would, would, would flock around Jesus. Um, but what Jesus did was um, he drew a crowd and then he ministered to the one um, or to the small group of people, his, his very close uh, disciples who, who walked with him everywhere he went. Um, you know, he invested himself into them, didn't he? Um, and so I believe the crowd is important. It's important that we're preaching the good news, and that we're, we're teaching um, the Word of God to the crowd. Um, but then within that, um, there needs to be a place where we are um, discipling the individual. And, and, and Jesus did that. A disciple is simply um, a disciplined one, a follower of Jesus. And, um, and, and I think in some ways, um, you know, we found it in, in our journey as a church, we found it easy um, to draw a crowd, but more difficult to disciple people. And, and we've had courses that have been really, really good and really beneficial. Um, but even those courses, they, they tend to work best when they're on a smaller scale, where people get to know each other and where people can ask questions. And so, you know, in our minds, um, when it comes to small groups, they, they work for discipleship because um, people build relationship with one another. Um, they can ask those questions. Um, they, they can dig into specific things that, that they might not dig into um, in a large crowd. Um, our plan is that um, all of our small group leaders will have uh, notes and discussion points from our Sunday messages available to them. Um, and a lot of the groups will follow that. They'll, they'll, they'll take what was preached on the Sunday and they'll go through what was preached on the Sunday. And so, pick I mean, up. in that aspect, a person sitting in church on Sunday, 
could hear you or me or, or, or Gina make a statement um, and they could say, oh, let me just make a note. I'm going to ask in my, in my connect group. That's great. Let me make yeah. a note in my notes because I don't get that. Or is that real? Where's the verses that back that up? And they could then make a note in their Bible or in their journal. And then at the connect group, when they begin to get into the message, that would be a brilliant setting yeah. to bring education or understanding, wouldn't it? That's right. And, um, and, and I think for a lot of people that are in our, our groups, um, it, it might be the only sort of Christian fellowship they have um, outside of, of coming together with the church family on a Sunday because um, they might be in families where, where other members are, are not saved. Um, they might be in workplaces where most people are in workplaces, secular workplaces, and, and don't have the same opportunities to, to, to talk through um, the Word of God and pick up on those things that actually are really important. And, and I think one of the, the really important things about having small groups where we dig into the Word of God is that it enables us to talk about how do we apply this to our lives um, and, and to, to, to actually gain from the experience of others that are in the group. So if you've got a really um, successful couple who have done marriage really well, um, you can ask them questions. So why does it work so well for you? If you've got people that are, are really clearly good parents and have done well with their, their parenting, for you know, whatever you think a good job of parenting is, you can ask them, how did you do that? So again, that's <laughs> not just discipleship. That really is sharing life. Yeah. Because yeah. life is yeah. something we, we all got blessed with as a gift. Mm. But sharing life brings the understanding of what can affect parenting, finances, yeah. uh, different areas. Let's talk a little bit about pastoral care because I really want to for those that are watching today that have never been a part of a connect group we were challenged on Sunday to realize we're not trying to recreate the church's version of come dine with me if you've seen the show where it's almost like come dine with me if you've not seen the show is they grab four random couples force them into each other's homes make them eat together and try and find something that they <coughs> have in common and it's fun to watch but that's not what we're trying to do. There is that initial awkwardness, maybe when you visit a new group of people, but I think the kingdom's bigger, and it's not long before you begin to celebrate each other. And then you move from celebration to something come dine with me, which we'll never have, which is an element of pastoral care. Now, again, what we've always done regarding pastoral care in family church is we've had a different model to some churches. <clears throat> but we don't believe pastoral care is the responsibility of the pastors. Because, again, that makes the pastoral team really not able to grow the church past 40 or 50 people unless they're personally um, connected and fried from doing that. So what we've always said, and it's been no secret, is we believe that 70 to 80% of pastoral care needs could be met from a connect group leader or being involved in a small group. And there's every chance that 80% of what they're going through that would be considered pastoral in any element really could be pastored, um, not with a meeting with a pastor, but an ongoing walking alongside in a small group. And then, okay, maybe uh, it gets to a point where it's not in the 80% and there's like 10% where the life group or, or the connect group leader says, I'm not comfortable with this. This issue or thing is a little bit beyond me. That's where we set up in Family Church a pastoral support team, um, hospital, hospital visitation, stuff that maybe is above the level of a connect group leader or where they would feel comfortable. And then beyond that, you may have something that's like really severe that needs um, the pastors. And then if the pastors are free, you see, because pastoral work's being done in family church every day, every week. The pastors are actually free to then engage with things that may be severe, full-on, need attention. And I just think that's more true to the model of the early church yeah. than one guy trying to be everything. Yeah. How do you see pastoral working for the benefit of those committing to connect groups? Well, it is about friendship, isn't it? It's about having people in your life that you're able to call friends um, and who see themselves as, as not just 
you know, associating with you because they're in the same group, but people that genuinely care for you and love you and, um, and walk alongside you. And, and I think the best thing a, a Christian friend can do is to bring you to Jesus. Um, so, and then the picture there is um, from the Bible is, is um, the four friends that brought um, the lame man to Jesus um, and lowered him in through the roof. Um, they, they acted on his behalf because he was too weak to, to get to Jesus. And, sometimes and also Andrew, the disciple, it says when he met Jesus, the first thing he did was go and get his brother yeah. and bring him. Yeah. And again, that shouldn't be a freakish story. We all go, well done, Andrew. That should be our, our, our life, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and it's so important, isn't it, that, that we have those people in our lives because sometimes we're weak and sometimes we need people to, to, to get alongside us, lift us up and take us to Jesus. And, um, and I, th- I think connect groups, I mean, this is nothing new. Connect groups and life groups and home groups, they've existed for a long time. But for us in family church, um, there's nothing new about that concept. But what's new is that we are, are putting an emphasis on that more than ever before um, because, uh, you know, it, it's struck us and we've sort of had revelation that um, we need to keep growing and one of the ways that we'll keep growing and keep seeing in the increase that God's promised us um, is by providing that level of discipleship for people because we don't just want to be a big crowd. We want to be um, a big crowd of people that do life really well together and flourish as a family. So we can communicate this, but what's some of the stuff that needs to click in people's lives? Because there's worse analogies I could use, but sometimes it's like pushing treacle uphill. Right. Right? Um, it's, it's like you gain ground, you lose ground. You gain ground, you lose... And it's almost like you're trying to convince people, almost legalistically, you must be in the group where our heart as leaders, in fact, it's not like that, is it? it it's we know the benefit. So if somebody's watching and maybe they've never been involved in small church, they've come faithfully on Sunday, fellowship for them has been staying for coffee afterwards, saying hi to the person next to them, and they're saying, all right, you, you've got my attention. I'm intrigued. Why should I go? I've heard you speak about pastoral. I've heard you, you speak about why, if I was sitting with you in a room now, Stuart, why would you tell me I need to be connected to a connect group? I would, I would say that um, if you're not connected to a connect group, you're simply going to miss out on the fullness of what, what God wants to do and what he has for you in terms of um, fellowship, building relationship with other Christians, in terms of discipleship, growing in God and, and with um, his people, and, and, and in, in that level of support that we, we gain through having those people in our lives. Um, there are people, and I think the bigger you get, the more you see this, there are people that um, just want to come to a service on a Sunday um, and I think the reason, there's, there's various reasons for that. One is people are afraid to, to open up and afraid to let other people into their lives because of bad experiences. Another reason is that people have a, a, a traditional mindset where, where being church is, is simply attending a service and that's it, they've done their bit. Um, and we need to break those mindsets because actually being church is, is being part of the body of Christ. It's being a, a member of... Of, of this incredible expression of God's kingdom on earth um, that involves us knowing who we are, knowing our place in the body and functioning um, as part of the whole body. And if we don't, then the body isn't going to function effectively. If we could give a window to people of what they would expect, because again, we've got enough structure, I believe, to make the evening what it needs to be, but it's not overstructured. Mm-hmm. I mean, years ago, this has been an ongoing situation with the church for years i remember there was something that came around called g12 that everybody had to be in a g12 it's the same principle small group Mm -hmm. then there was the whole cell group thing that the body's a body and everyone needs to be in a cell we've seen this coming round over the years the 30 years i've been in ministry i've seen this come round with different packaging but it's the same thing now if somebody was to come to a small group we don't live by what used to be in the cell group teaching of you know, the, the three W's, and, and, or, you know, there's word and there's worship and there's work it out. There's an element of that, but it's going to be very relational, isn't it? It's yeah. going to involve friendship. Yeah. 
What could a person, because this week you yeah. launched a whole bunch of new life groups, praise God, new connect groups, sorry, <coughs> um, praise yeah. God, yeah, across are. Portsmouth, the across the other congregations. There was a real good buy-in from people. Yeah. But today, yeah. people may be watching this going, all right, I didn't sign up because I've got certain apprehensions. I don't know what happens when I walk through that door. Will it be like, come dine with me? Will I be forced to do things I don't want to do? Uh, what what would a person yeah. expect? Now, again, you've got to understand that even some of our life uh, connect groups, I keep saying life groups, forgive me for that. I know I'm, I'm doing it to irritate <laughs> Stuart. Um, but connect groups are even different. We've got some people that connect fishing together. We've got people that connect around different times of life that they're in young parents, mums, times of day. Um, and then we've got some that connect in a more um, uh, structured way. What could people expect or look for if they say, all right, I'm willing to take the step into a connect group? Yeah, so, so on this list, we've now got um, 43 groups throughout the church. Um, 80 or 90 people went through our training over the last couple of months, which is just, um, it, it's so good. I'm so happy about it's better than what we've ever we've done before, to. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and have we reached that 100% on Connect Group Sunday? Did we get 100% of the adults in Family Church sign up to Connect Groups? Not yet. Um, but what I believe is going to happen is, is that there's going to be a huge um, excitement about the, uh, the, the Connect Groups. And as people get involved, then other people are going to want to get involved because they see how beneficial it is for them. Um, what you can, can expect when you go to a Connect Group by the way, all the groups on this list are about, they have to include um, fellowship, discipleship, and prayer. Every group on this list. And there's other groups as well um, that exist beyond this list um, that are more perhaps social-based or activity-based or team-based. Um, but every group, every, every one of these 43 groups as of today um, is about fellowship, discipleship, and prayer. Um, so you, you walk, um, so you go to an evening group um, and, and you arrive um, you have a time of fellowship. It's about building relationship, just getting to know one another. Um, and then the Bible is opened. Um, a just lot stop a minute, fellowship. Is that somebody puts a kettle on? Oh, it's so much more than that. You know, what, what, <laughs> again, people maybe have never gone to these groups. Yeah, okay. When you say fellowship, does that mean, I mean, some of them are probably thinking fellowship. Last time I heard that was fellowship of a ring, Tolkien. What's going to happen? What yeah. is, you know... Break it down so that there's no scary... What is fellowship? What's that first part it's look there's like? There's a bunch of men making an airfix boat. <laughs> That's fellowship. Um, Someone got excited then when you said that. <laughs> yeah. There was an excitement. I'm in, you know. <laughs> it, it's, it's simply about getting to know each other. It, it's about um, being interested in one another, talking about how life is going. Um, it, it is about having tea and coffee because actually um, everyone loves a good cup of tea. Here in England, um, and do we train our guys to make good tea? Oh yeah, yeah oh, that's right, part okay, of yeah, the that's yeah, part okay. of the training, absolutely. And <laughs> the right tea bags are yeah. very important. But uh, seriously, though, it, it's about being comfortable with one another. Um, it's about being able to, to build trust um, and an environment where where people can come in, um, whether they've been part of the group for a long time or they're new to the group. This is what the, what we see, and this is what we want to build. And this is what we've asked the Connect Group leaders to, to endeavor to do, um, where people can come in and, and they can feel at home. Yeah. I guess that's the, the, the key word, just feeling at home, feeling welcomed, feeling loved. Uh, and then um, each group will have a time where they, they, they spend time building relationship. And, and then it m moves on to discipleship, which is about, I mean, all of this is discipleship, really, building relationship, being accountable, all of that. But it, it moves on to, to studying the Word of God. That's an important part of a connect group. And uh, so it involves um, opening the Bible. Um, m most of the groups will uh, reflect on the Word that was shared on the Sunday. They'll be provided with notes and discussion points. Discussion points are important because it's not about someone sitting there and preaching to the group. It's about someone facilitating um, a study um, or, or a discussion on, on what was spoken about. Um, on that Sunday, and obviously certain things will be picked up on the group leader. will will have some prompts, maybe, and, and and be able to 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 focus on maybe the key points. Um, but it is an opportunity for people to ask questions, um, and 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 to dig in to what was shared 
on the weekend. Some groups um, are going to, at times, run different courses as well. Freedom in Christ course is one of our favorite discipleship courses that's available, and some of the groups will run that sometimes. Um, the Alpha course, some of the groups may want to run the Alpha course at different times because there might be people connected with those that are attending the group who they want to, uh, to bring in and, and gently introduce to Christianity, and that's a great way uh, for people to come in to a safe environment and, and to be able to ask those big life questions and to have some real good structured uh, Bible study on, on those questions. Um, and then also prayer is, is an important part of, of the groups. And, and it's not about making anyone feel uncomfortable. Not everyone has to pray if they don't want to. Um, but there will be the opportunity for people to be prayed for. Um, and, and also, In a natural way, not like... Yeah. Uh, a ceremony, just no. sitting down in armchairs, yeah. praying. Yeah, and just praying for one another's needs, one another's families. Um, maybe there's certain things that are happening in the church or in the city um, or the town or village uh, that that, um, that the group wants to pray for. And I think that's really important. Or sometimes even nationally, there's things that you know are really sort of heavy on our hearts that we want to bring before God. But um, also in that time, it's an opportunity for for group members to step out and, and to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit as well. And it's a safe environment for that. Um, the group leaders, you know, that they have the right to say, you know what, um, thank you for that, but that probably is, is uh, you know, not for everyone here tonight. Um, or they have um, the, 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 the opportunity to say, you know what, that, that is so from God. Let's just, just spend a few moments looking at that and, and just, um, just bring in that... Um, uh, before the Lord, and, and, and so, you know, it's a really safe environment to, 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 to step out and to exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, so that's kind of what to expect. Nothing weird, nothing spooky, um, a bunch of normal people who love Jesus getting together to do life together, to, to, to make um, an environment where people feel at home and loved and welcomed, um, to open up the Word of God, to, to, to grow deeper in God, and, and, and to uh, receive encouragement and support and prayer. And again, in our meeting-driven Western church, this isn't another meeting. This is a community. So it's not just about what happens on that night or that day when they're meeting. Indeed, yeah. It's about the relationships that continue Very during good. the week. Yeah. Uh, our connect group our elders connect group we're all on uh, whatsapp because what the early church didn't have was mobile phones and we do social media those kind of things so um you know i can wake up different mornings and suddenly there's a message on whatsapp from one of uh, the pastors and it says hey um just going through some stuff at the moment in this area would you guys pray with me and you'll, you'll see on whatsapp people start going yeah yeah we're in we're in, you got it. And little icons like, uh, you know, or, or little things of hands praying, yeah, yeah, we're with you. How awesome is that? Yeah. So again, we don't want to say this is another meeting to go to every week. This is bringing community into your Christianity. Mm. That During the week, uh, it'll be great if a lot of the Connect Groups use WhatsApp or, or other stuff like that. Because then it's just, you know, maybe someone's praying during the week and all of a sudden they get something. They could just, hey guys, this is what I got. Where the setting of, the room is <laughs> small enough to manage that. Um, and again, we want to harness uh, phones and social media and all that good stuff, not to spread gossip, but to uh, spread encouragement. And so to me, it's about learning. It's about uh, pastoral care. It's about friendship. It's not forcing people into a room, but it's bringing them into small church so that big church can be even better as well closing thoughts Stuart um, two things first of all um, just with regards to the social media um, stuff uh, we've got this excellent bit of software uh, that the uh, connect group leaders can keep track of, of their members um, keep attendance uh, communicate very easily at the press of a button with their members um, there's a few that need a little bit more support to, uh, to learn how to use it um, but um, all right, and uh, but but it's it's going to be really good actually because it enables us to have a um, a, a real great overview of, of what kind of percentage of people have bought into connect groups, and we'll know who's in one, who's not in one, and we can sort of follow people up maybe if they're drifting a bit. And that's not Big Brother. 
that's not like we know you're no. in a, it, it's are we caring for you because we're desire. yeah we're overseers yeah. of your soul we want to know we're doing the best yeah, job yeah. we can you know yeah. uh, again ever so quickly the la- other point and the other point is this um really believe that 18 months ago god spoke to us um about increase that increase is coming and that we had to make room for that increase and we've touched on this already uh, there's been a few things um both in our, our portsmouth congregation and as a whole church that we've done to make room for increase um, and, and, and in Isaiah 54, it speaks about enlarging the place of your tent, stretching out the curtains, um, but then also strengthening your stakes. Um, and that's that balance thing. As increase comes and as we endeavor to enlarge and as we preach the gospel, um, and we see increase and we also need to be becoming strong in discipleship. Uh, and I believe that that um, connect groups and the relaunch of connect groups are going to enable us to become very strong as a big crowd of people. So there's that balance thing. We're not just preaching the gospel, as Jesus said in, in Mark 16, but we're making disciples um, uh, from Matthew 28. You know, we're, we're, we're making disciples and seeing that strength come as we grow. Because Jesus said two things. He said, come to me, but then he said, learn of me. Yeah. And I think between the big group and the small group, we can do that, you know. So, hey, I hope you're inspired today and you've enjoyed uh, what we're talking about in Talking Church. And if you um, say, yeah, I'm, I'm a connect group, I'm in, be an ambassador. Find the people in your world that don't get connect groups. Maybe show them this video um, and be an ambassador. But maybe you're here and you're like, all right, you've got my attention. Now, we want you to give them a go. Now, we've got this bit of paper, but also they're on our app. Uh, oh, yeah. how, how could people, if somebody's like, all right, so good, yeah. I'm in, I'm on it, oh, you got me, yeah. Stu. How could someone find out more, sign up for a Easy connect peasy. Go to family.church, um, search it on your app store. Uh, it will come up with, first thing will be Family Church's app. Um, you recognize the logo. Uh, on the very front page, scroll down to Connect Groups, click on that, and you can search for a Connect Group local to you. You can filter the search if you're looking for a mum's group or a, a men's group. Um, if you're that person looking for a mum's group and a men's group, that's a bit weird. Um, and, um, but to your local congregation, to your local area of your town, you can filter the search and you can find, and, and then just you click on the group and you say that you'd like to um, request to join the group. And is there something on the website too? Uh, same thing on the website. Just go to the section on the website that says Connect Groups. It's available one click from the front page. Okay. Hey, hope you've enjoyed today. We're going to be back same time next week looking at another subject that's relative to us not doing church but being church. That's why we've called this Talking Church. We want to have everything Jesus has given us. We want to enjoy everything that the Lord's given us to enjoy. At the top of that list is relationships. So I want to challenge you. Think about today, be an ambassador of uh, connect groups in family church. And if you're not yet in one, get signed up. See you next week. God bless.